I thank God for the praise and worship team, your freshness, freshness. Mm. Sometimes I just hate to, I don't even want to say, use the word stop, but I hate to even interfere with worship. My God. Uh, we don't never get nothing done, no God. If, uh, you know what I'm saying? You know, we wash it, we won't never get nothing done. We just be, they be like, all we do is wash. I think God is calling that back to the church. Mm. None but worship. Nehemiah chapter one. Nehemiah chapter one. When you have it, please say, man. I know some of you have your iPhones. It should be on the screen. Or your iPads. Or your your dinosaur Bible, like me. Let's get it. My God, the word of God in Nehemiah 1 says, uh, in late autumn in the month of Kelsey, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but don't. In the 20th year of, the, of King Xerxes' reign, I was at the fortress of Susa. Hannah and I, one of my brothers, came to visit me with some other, some other men who had just arrived from Judah. I asked them about the Jews who had returned, my God, from captivity and about how things were going in Jerusalem. They said to me, things are not going well. For those who are, for those who return to the province of Judah, they are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem, uh, my God, has been torn down, and the gates have been destroyed. Walls represent protection, y'all. Is your walls broken right now? Is the enemy coming in at your life as he won't because you don't have no walls? No, 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 no. You can bring, you can put walls up that you're trying to keep the enemy out, but you imprison yourself. So make sure the very walls that you got up, you ain't in prison to the very walls that you got up. But you need gates. Gates mean access. I don't want to get close to nobody because I've been hurt at another church. See, a lot of people have bought a lot of their pain from other churches to this church. And therefore, they want to keep people at bay. You want to stiff on people because you got walls up. You're in prison. Can't, God can't help you. God bought you here to get free. My God, but you're keeping everybody out so you can't get free. Walking wounded. That ain't what God called the body of Christ to be. He called us to be healthy, whole, and sound so that we can go out there and affect the world. Who wants to be connected to somebody that's unhealthy? Mm. Jump down to verse number five. It says, Then I said, O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant of unfailing love with those who love him and obey his command, not those who go to church, not those who quote scripture, not those who got degrees, do you love him? And when you love him, you want your life to look like his life. Come to church, don't do nothing for you. But transformation comes from an application of the word of God. When you love God, you want to be like God. When you love God, you want to imitate God. When you love God, you'll let it go. When you love God, you'll forgive. When you love God, you'll be obedient. My God, many people that go to church, young men of God, don't love God. They go to church, but they don't love the God who died for the church. He keeps his covenant with those who love God, not those who profess God. Thank you, woman of God. Verse 6 says, listen to my prayer, Nehemiah said. Look down and see me praying night and day. Stay persistent, y'all. Night and day for your people, Israel. He said, I confess that we have sinned against you. Yes, even my own family, Nehemiah said, and I have sinned. We have sinned terribly, my God, by not obeying the commands, decrees, and regulations that you gave us through your servant Moses. Lifestyle still matters. Please remember what you told your servant Moses. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, God is standing ready to receive you back no matter what has happened in your life. But if you return to me, but you got to return. And coming to church don't mean you return to God. Your affection, your love, your attitude, your commitment. That's meaning you return to God. When you say, God, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. When you return to God, he becomes capital L-O-R-D in your life. He ain't just save, he's Lord. And when he's Lord in your life, you submit to what God said. You don't do stuff out of order. You don't go start churches without permission and stuff like that. When God, I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Talking about Lord, but you're doing what you want to do. You don't date people that God didn't tell you to date. You don't marry people that God didn't tell you to marry. When he's capital L-O-R-D. You don't justify habitual sin. I'm just keeping it on the dollar. We're living in a cold-blooded hour where my God, where postmodernism and secularism has taken over the church. Where, like as I was telling my son in the back, where a lot of people that go to church every Sunday don't believe that this is absolute truth. We have deviated. We don't believe this is absolute truth. We negotiate and compromise and justify. My God, and try to say that man wrote this and did this and that, and we don't have to live by that. That was Old Testament, this New Testament. We just all messed up in the body of Christ everywhere. And God is looking for a Caleb. He's looking for a Joshua. 
You're looking for a Moses that's not looking to be popular, but you're looking to please and obey God. And I want to be one of the ones that please and obey God. I ain't in it for popularity. I'm not popular. I ain't never been popular. I ain't looking to be popular either. I'm looking to stand before God and her job well done. That's the price you got to pay, Brandon. Especially gangsters coming out of prison. We got to pay a price for people to respect us, man of God. So that comes by way of lifestyle. So let me move a little deeper. I'm flowing. Verse 8, please remember what you have told your servant. If you are unfaithful to me, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me and obey my commands and live by them, my God, then even if you are exiled to the ends of the earth, I will bring you back to the place I have chosen for my name's sake. Verse 10 says, the people you rescue, my God, by your great power and strong hand are your servants. Verse 11 says, oh Lord, please. Nehemiah said, oh Lord, please hear my prayer. Listen to the prayers of those of us who, my God, who delight in honoring you. Please, do you delight in pleasing God this afternoon? My God. Oh, my God, we delight in honoring you. Amen, Minister Janice. Please grant me success today by making the king favorable to me. Put it into his heart to be kind to me. In those days, my God, Nehemiah said, I was the cupbearer, the king's cupbearer. Nehemiah knew in this prayer that he was going to need the king's favor. So he automatically discerned and picked up in the spirit, Christian, that I'm going to need the king's favor. So God touched the king's heart. He knew that. Way before he undertook the task, he knew that he was going to need favor from the king that he served. Key word, served. Yeah, yeah. served. Not saying that's a man like I'm a man, so I ain't got to serve him. Thank you, Lord, for the word. Bless the people of God. Speak vision into our spirits. Breathe on that which is already created on the inside of us before the foundations of the world was ever spoken into existence before there was a who, what, when, and where. We had purpose and vision. So, Father God, I thank you, Father God, that even now as we stand as a community of believers, who we stand in freedom because of the price that you paid. Thank you, Lord. As I was reading the word this morning, Holy Ghost, thank you, Lord, that they spit on you and they, they hit you in the face and slapped you, and you did that for me. You went through everything you went through so that I could be right here today free. I thank you that Easter is every day in my life. Save somebody's soul this afternoon, Lord. I thank you, Father God, that you be lifted up. Let me get out the way now. Now you get in the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on and say amen. You now can be seated in the presence of the Lord. As I prepare, if you can go to YouTube, if you had not subscribed to our YouTube uh, page, you are more than welcome to do that if you need some help. Just see one of the sisters or brothers that can help you. But this is part two as we get ready to continue on in vision. I like Nehemiah, my God, because Nehemiah was a young man of God. He had a tall responsibility, and he needed, my God, vision to get it done. And so I want to encourage you, my God, to go to the YouTube and uh, look at uh, vision on point number one, I mean, uh, series number one, and then uh, uh, you can get an understanding of where we're going. Mm. Thank you, Lord. As I told you last week, the great Dr. Miles Moreau, rest in peace, he said that vision is the source of hope and life. The greatest gift ever given to mankind, as I told you, isn't the physical sight, y'all, but the gift of vision. Sight, as I taught you, is a function of the eyes, and vision is the function of the heart. Eyes that look are common, eyes that see are rare. Vision also makes suffering and disappointment bearable. Pastor Lawrence people. Vision will keep you. Vision will sustain you. Everybody has a vision, but you got to tap into that for it to become alive. So point number one was people of vision encounter problems, but I'm not going to mess with that. I get asked quite often, even now, why do we have to suffer so much if we're supposed to be men and women of God? When you come to Christ, God never promised you that you would never go through nothing. And I want some of you to understand that you hear this, but I need you to get a revelation about what I'm supposed to say and I'm moving because I want to finish this. Some of the things that you are experiencing right now in your life it's not about 
what you've been through. It's about where you're going. We hear that, but do you really understand that? If you understand some of the trials and some of the persecution and some of the hardships that you are experiencing right now, when you're like, my God, I thought, when is this going to stop? When is, it ain't about, Mike, it's about where you're going. Because the enemy is terrified of you and I because of what lives on the inside of you and I. He noted if you ever, ever, ever tap into that what lives on the inside of you, you're going to become a bomb from Gilead. You will become unstoppable. You will become an unstoppable moving force. When you operate in purpose and when you tap into the personal vision that God has given you for your life and the enemy is going to fight you and I on every hand, every turn, every crevice to try to keep you and I discouraged, discontent and frustrated so that you and I will never ever tap into that with lies dormant on the inside of you. And if you have tapped into your purpose, if you have tapped into your vision, if you got a glimpse and you know where you're headed in life, but you don't have that zest, you don't have that zeal, you don't have that fire, you need a fresh touch, you need to be digging into the things of God. You need to be saying, God, breathe on me. Every chance you get when you come together as a corporate of believers, God, breathe on me. My God, when you're driving down your car, God, breathe on me. Sometimes you need a fresh touch two and three times. My God, some of us has lost our freshness. Life has got on top of us. Life get hard sometimes. My God, come on, somebody, but you need God to breathe on you. And if you don't know what your purpose and you don't know what the vision that God has for your personal life, then you need to be crying out to the Lord. That's why you ain't got time to be wasting time. I love what the late doctor said. He said, why are you sleeping? I'm studying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you up here playing around? My God, he's taking care of kingdom business. He, my God, he says, my God, that, that you need to be in such great demand that when people, when people think of kingdom, the first person to come to mind is the late Dr. Miles Monroe. Yes, when they think of leadership, my God, he is the first thought to come to mind at the time, leadership. When they think about bringing somebody in to teach on leadership, the great doctor was the one, Stacy. You want to be so powerful and operate in your gift and function in what God called you, Stacy. When people think of the top salesman in the car industry, it should be you. We need to try to do everything we can to offer this man a million dollars so he can sell these cars. You need to be executing your gift. You need to be perfecting your gift. You need to be executing and implementing the vision that God has for your life. Will you be in such great demand? Are you in demand? Are you in demand? When you tap into your purpose and your potential, you will become in a great demand. People will want you in their presence. People will summons you. Be the best, my God, LPN, uh, 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 Toya, uh, Kendall, y'all be the best nurse. My God, be the best Felicia Curtaker. My God, if you work in a, uh, uh, if you are a flight attendant, be the best flight attendant. If you are a gym instructor, be the best gym instructor. If you work with kids, be the best children worker. You want to inspire to be the best at whatever it is that God has called you to do, church. And so understand, my God, that why do we suffer? Because some of the suffering that you and I go through is not about where you're at, but it's about where you're going. Yeah. If the enemy can keep you ignorant, void of understanding, then he's winning. If you never tap into why you was created, you're going to return back to God full when you're supposed to return back to God empty. If you never tap into your purpose, then you're not going to operate into your purpose. If you don't know what your purpose is, you'll never execute your purpose, my God. And there's people waiting on your purpose to be exposed. And so many people are dying, returning back to God full of gifts and talents that they never tapped into. Because, my God, we jumping and shouting, screaming and shouting, being animated and all this stuff. My God, many people, my God, go to church because they want to be, they want to be entertained. They don't want to be transformed. And I'm not putting no churches down, but my God, sooner or later, my God, you got to get past all that entertainment and get down to the nuts and bolts of things that you need to get down to, which is finding out why you was created, finding out your purpose in life. My God, wanting to know that you want to walk in dominion and the things that God has called you to do, that you want to be everything that God has called you to do. Sooner or later, you got to get that serious about your purpose and your calling where you say, I don't know, nothing else matter. If you got kids and grandkids, should nothing else matter you are finding out why God allowed you to still be alive. If you are 35 years old, you should be like, your number one prayer is God, why do I exist? Period. 
You don't exist to get your hair done. You don't exist to get some shoes and to put on a suit. You don't exist just to go take a trip to Cancun. That is not a why you and I exist. You have a purpose, and the purpose is to fill the kingdom mandate that lives on the inside of you. That's why Jesus said in the New Testament, my God, the kingdom of heaven is within. In the natural, in the Old Testament, they were looking for the kingdom from without. But Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within. You got to tap into the inside. You got to tap into the inside. You got to tap into the inside. You got to go inward. You got to go inward. That's why it's so critical that you let go of the bitterness, the unforgiveness, and all that stuff because it blocks you from tapping into that what lives on the inside. And so some of the suffering that you are experiencing, some of it is self-inflicted, but others, uh, some of it is because of the purpose that lives on the inside of you. Everything ain't the devil. Now, the devil may use people to cause some of the pain, and so the devil wants you and I. It's called deflect responsibility. If he can get you focusing on her, if he can get you focusing on her, if he can get you focusing on her, you're not going to never focus on the real problem, yeah, 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 yeah. which is the enemy. Yeah. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So you got to be careful. I'm going to teach you today. You got to be careful that your focus ain't on the wrong thing and you're fighting the wrong enemies. A lot of people is fighting the wrong enemies. We need to fight the enemy of us first. <laughs> Nehemiah understood that there was going to be opposition. Point number one is opposition. You're going to encounter problems when you live for God. If you are not being effective outside the four walls, the enemy is not worried about you. If you never read, you never pray, you never have a real desire and a real love to allow God to use your life to bless somebody else's life, then you're not being effective and the enemy is not worried about you. I promise you. So some of us is not going through any suffering and persecution behind, listen to me, y'all, I'm flowing a little different behind our commitment to Christ. We going through suffering and persecution because we won't quit sinning. Sooner or later, you and I got to grow to where you want to go through stuff because the enemy is terrified of you operating your purpose. Boy, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sooner or later, you got to get tired of suffering behind flesh, is what I'm trying to say. Let me let, you know what I'm saying? And you want to go through behind your purpose. Uh, you want to be, if you're going to be attacked, be attacked because you operate in purpose. If you're going to be attacked, be attacked because you're making a difference in the kingdom, my God. If you want to be attacked, you want to go through stuff, that's because people are being snatched out because when they get around you, they feel hope. When they get around you, they feel encouraged, my God. When they get around you, my God, they feel like they can, my God. You ought to get tired of suffering behind flesh. Yeah. Wrong decisions. I said before you, blessing and curses, and, and he said, choose life. You ought to be tired of suffering behind flesh. I'm redundant. You want to suffer behind operating in purpose. Sometimes that's more painful, though, than the flesh. Purpose has a greater impact than the flesh. Your flesh won't impact the kingdom. Amen. But your purpose will. So because your purpose will impact the kingdom, that means the suffering is going to be more intense. If you're here this afternoon, and thank God you're here, but you, he ain't capital L-O-R-D, some of that pain you're dealing with, it's really self-inflicted. So you ain't got nobody to be mad at but yourself. It ain't the church fault. It ain't your sister's fault. It ain't your brother's fault. It ain't the pastor's fault. It ain't the white man's fault. But I thank God for Nehemiah who understood that there's always an element of suffering. Anytime you and I are moving in purpose, there's always Sambalat and Tobias connected to destroy, hinder, stop progress in life. Yeah. You better pay attention to the Sambalat and Tobias. Sambalat and Tobias was enemy to the progress of Nehemiah, if you know the story. Sambalat and Tobias, get familiar with those words and say, God, show me my Sambalat, show me my Tobias. Because uh, some of you have let him in because he looked good. 
but he was a Sambalit and a Tobiah. Don't, 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 don't make that mistake. People don't want to see you thrive. Are y'all listening to me? People do not want to see you flourish, church. So you got to say, God, and that's a bold prayer. Show me my, because when God show you your seven bottles of Tobiah, don't be surprised if they're real close and in your circle. The Bible says that the enemy will swoop down on you and be right up on you. When the enemy want to destroy a work, or interrupt a vision, what he would do, he would come sit up a monsters. He'll go through the vision. He'll sweep and mop and stay out the church. He'll go wherever I go when I'm preaching. He'll show up and clean the church. And my God, the new campus, Sam Ballard, will swoop. See what I'm trying to say? You got to be careful. Are you bold enough to ask God to show you your Sam Ballard and your Tobias? Because remember what Sam Ballard and Tobias are. They are enemies to purpose. They are enemies to vision. They are enemies to progress. Every one of us got them. I got them sitting in here right now. That's why many of them didn't clap. Because they ain't happy. And Bishop told me, you're going to lose some. Keep pushing. Amen, Janice. Amen. Would it hurt? I'm going to take a licking and keep right on ticking, baby. But when you're dealing with enemies, you got to do this right here. You got to move to point number two. You got to exercise prayer. I didn't say get no gun. I didn't say start talking about nobody. I didn't say quit coming to church. You got to do just like I'm giving you principles from Nehemiah. Yeah. Nehemiah had enemies, and then when the enemy showed up, he went straight to prayer. Yeah. Come on. April the 1st to the 3rd, we're going to be on a three-day fast at the new building, yeah. at the new campus, getting ready for the launch. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to be a Monday, a Tuesday, and a Wednesday. We're going to be there praying like we normally do on our 21-day fast. We get ready to saturate that place. Yeah. My God. Amen. Amen. And so we got to pray. Ah, uh, it's going to be, yeah, it is God. Yeah, it's going to, we got to pray. But Nehemiah understood the principle of prayer. Let me move forward. Let me move forward. I ain't got that much. That's why I'm flowing like this. As Nehemiah goes before the Lord in prayer, he sets the example. Is your life an example? Is your life adding to the kingdom or hindering the kingdom? The things that you do outside of the, first, uh, outside of the church, is it adding or taking away? Is, if somebody scrolled through your Facebook or social media, what they going to see? Is it Hosanna when it's good and it's MF this and GDAM this? When it's not good, ask yourself that question. I'm not using profanity. Ask yourself that. Are you endorsing stuff that you shouldn't be endorsing? When people scroll down through your page, what do they see? Is it adding to or is it taking away? Is it bringing shame on your life? Is it bringing shame on your marriage? Is it bringing shame on your children? Is it bringing shame, my God, on your family? Ask yourself, when people tap into your social media, what do they see? Is everything MF? Is everything GD? You know why I'm saying that? Because I've seen many. Pastor Jeff was talking about it Sunday before last. He said it grieved until he got up off of Facebook. Was you there Sunday? He got, he, he got all he said. He said it's a shame. Pastor Jeff is the professor of the first service. My God, the Dr. Vogue. My God, he says it's a shame that the people you would think was unsaved, but it was Christians. Yeah. So, my God, is your life an example? Nehemiah teaches us, my God, how to go to the Lord, oh my God, in prayer. Write this down. Prayer involves praise. Prayer involves praise. Prayer involves praise. I was getting my nails done Saturday, and I walked out, and, and a lady, I won't call her name, but a lady said, Pastor Peoples. She was in the car waiting on her mother. She said, Pastor Peoples. I said, she said, are you Pastor Peoples? I said, yes, ma'am. And uh, she said, I remember you at Greenwood, and, uh, and now it's transformation. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, yeah, yeah. She said, I'm proud of you. And she told me who she was. And I was telling my son, I told Pastor Chan, I said, Pastor Chan, we got to be very, very careful. Yeah. Yeah. There are so many people that's watching you, and you don't even know it. That woman remember me 20 years ago. Who watching you? Because somebody is. Who, who watching y'all at school? Social media. What, what is what is I'm, I'm, Y'all heard I got a pastor here, baby. What, what, what are you presenting to the people, church? Nehemiah gave us an example. 
We should inspire to be an example. And he gave us, my God, tools, my God, to defeat the end, the Sambalas and the Tobias. And my God, and one of them is praise. Praise confuses the enemy. Praise turns things around in your life. Yeah, my God, when you are troubled and perplexed on every side, who on a Sunday morning, please get to the house of the Lord. Say, I can't wait to praise the Lord. Oh, my God. Mm. Nehemiah begins his prayer by exalting the Lord. He praises God for his superiority. Write that down. He praises God for his superiority. He praises God for his strength. Talking about God's strength and his sovereignty. His sovereignty. It's not by my might nor by my power, but it's by his spirit, say the Lord. Oh, God, I've been dropping in my spirit since the end of 2018. Y'all hear me pray over some of y'all strength for the journey. Strength for the journey. Strength for the journey, Tiffany. Strength. You need strength for the journey, y'all. You need strength, not flesh strength, spiritual strength for the journey. Oh, I have to pray that prayer every single day. Oh, many of y'all don't know, but many times I thought about uh, closing the door. Yeah, and going on, live this cush, comfortable life that God has blessed me with in the natural, my God. But the call. Uh, the call woe unto me if I don't teach and preach the gospel my God where am I going to go I, what's normal show me normal in the Christianity uh, brother brother Christian and normal God never called Christians to a normal life uh, God called in your life will disrupt your life Sheila uh, when you really got a real yes get ready for your whole life to be disrupted I'm talking about kids life wife, marriages husbands uh, you might lose your job uh, you might have to file unemployment my God just keep on walking with God because the yes oh my God Nehemiah said, okay, I got to go into prayer, but I got to do some praise, my God. But Nehemiah understood the attributes and the characteristics of God, his superiority, his strength, and his sovereignty, my God. This is how Jesus taught his disciples to pray. He told them in Matthew 6, now I pray like this, our Father. You got to extol God, our Father. And I know, my God, for Father in the natural, some of, our, some, some of us, that's painful. Uh, my father died when I was two. I never knew him, my God. He crossed over, my God, when I was a baby. But for some of y'all, y'all think an F, I mean, F father, my God, uh, it, it's painful. When y'all think of the word F, father, it's painful. Yeah. It used to be painful for you, Naila, but it ain't today. Yeah, Give God the glory. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Our father, you're giving authority. Do you honor God? Do you respect God? Is God seated in the proper authority of your mind? Who's on the throne of your mind right now? Whose voice is really the loudest in your life right now? What are you attached to that you extol and esteem more highly than God? Nehemiah gave us a model, Pastor Tidrick. Our Father, Jesus said, Our Father, which art in heaven. He seated heaven, the highest. Quit bringing God down. You can't bring God down. God too big to come down here, baby. He'll come down here in Egypt and see about you and he come right back up and sit on the right hand of the Father. And we try to bring God, dumb God down. We don't, the church don't honor and reverence God like they used to. You know why? Because this postmodernism, secularism, don't believe that this is absolute truth no more. Many professing Christians, even some in here, and I hate to say it, don't believe the fullness of Genesis through Revelations, which has caused us to have a lot of contradictions in our lifestyle outside of the four walls. But Nehemiah and Jesus said, Our Father, whether your natural father has caused pain, whether you know, don't know your natural father like I didn't, or whether you do know your natural father, you can't put God in the same category as your natural father. If you had a, if you was blessed to have a George Thomas and, and raise the kids right and have a great example, like Pastor Madeline had with her father, my God, and, and Minister George, and, and my God, but, but Sparkle, you know what I'm saying, Sparkle, that's Champ's daughter over there, raise your hand, Sparkle. My God, my daughter right here, Naila, uh, early on, <laughs> uh, she didn't have no, and they didn't have no good example. Yeah, yeah Sparkle, yeah, she said, that's right, she didn't, she didn't have that. She was trying to say, but God. Yeah. See, I thank God, Christian. I thank God, Christian, when you, when, you, when you get married, man of God, when God allow y'all to produce, my God, that offspring, that it's going to be a godly offspring. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord 
what you're trying to say? I speak and decree and declare that over your life, son, that y'all will raise up godly offspring. You see what I'm trying to say? Especially considering what y'all been through individually. See what I'm trying to say? You are to inspire my God to want to be a good father. I thank God that our God gave me the opportunity toward you to redeem myself for my son and my daughter, man. Mm, mm, mm. But you got to understand that you got, you got to put God, let me move on, put God back in his rightful place. Put him in his rightful place. And when God ministers you needs to sit in his rightful place, that means that you got to adhere to what the scriptures say. So you and I don't get to stay bitter. Why do I keep talking about that? Because you, you can't do it your way and think that he's going to be our father. You, he's not going to be Abba father. He's going to always be a father. He is who he is, whether you worship or not. But at the end of the day, if you want to see, my God, the word of God active and alive in your life, then you got to do it according to his way. Yeah. Yeah. My job as a pastor is to bring the word of God to you and bring you to the word. My job as a pastor is to bring God and the word of God to you and bring you to the word. Yeah. Meaning making, that, make, making this word of God, my God, my God, uh, 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 applicable in your day-to-day -day life. Yeah. All right. Many people sit in churches, they say, oh, okay, how do I get that to apply in my life? How do that, what the pastor just talked about, how do that operate in my life? How can I take what I'm learning, my God, and implement it? That's why many of us are so frustrated. Because we're hearing good preaching and we're hearing good word, but we're not seeing no manifestation in our personal life. We're seeing different people around us blessed, but we're not blessed. Why? Why? Are you properly connected? Many people got questions. It's okay. But I want you to understand that the word of God is still applicable for today. It ain't outdated. God didn't make no mistakes when he wrote the word over 4,000 years ago, church. He was thinking forward. My God, he was a generational thing. He's seen this day and time. Oh, I know the word of God to be true. I look in the mirror myself, not just because I read it, but I see it manifest in my own personal life. God is faithful. Not one promise has not been fulfilled. He said he would do it, and he has done it. He said he was a way maker, and he has done it. He said he's delivered, he has done it. He said he's a healer, and he has done it. Not one promise has failed short, my God. You got to understand the word of God is still alive, and it's still revelatory today. No matter what man say, God is God, and he's God all by himself. I don't care what society say. Write this down up on the point number two. My God, you got to persevere. Nehemiah prayed day and night before he, oh my God, Nehemiah prayed day and night. He got before the Lord and prayed. I'm going to read Luke 18, starting in verse number one. Luke 18, my God, verse number one. See, you got to be persistent in prayer. Yeah, you got to be persistent. I'm going to read it for the sake of time, my God. On the day, uh, one day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. There was a judge in a certain city, he said, who never feared God nor cared about people. So he had no reverence for God. And so if you, if, ooh, thank you, Holy Ghost. So if a person don't respect God, what makes you think they're going to respect you? Listen to me, ladies. Listen to me, ladies. If he don't love God. I ain't talking about talking about God. If God is not number one in his heart and in his life, I promise you he will never be able to love you like you deserve to be loved. And you will always compromise and dump down yourself. He got to love God more than he love you. And so if he don't love God, how do you expect for him to love you? The Bible says that this judge didn't honor God, didn't fear God, and so he did not care about people. So that tells me, my God, in order to truly love people, you got to love God. And God loves his people. So when you and I choose not to get involved and love God's people, then we are not truly loving God because God is love. Yes, sir. That's good. Thank y'all for that. Thank you for that, woman of God. I like them students over there. A widow of the city came to him repeatedly saying, give me justice in this dispute, dispute with, with my enemy. Uh, the judge ignored her for a while, y'all. Uh, but finally he said to himself, my God, I don't fear God. I don't even care about people. Oh, but look what he said in verse 5. He said, but this woman is driving me crazy. I'm going to see that she gets justice because she is wearing me out with her constant request. Oh, you got to keep praying. 
Oh, though the enemy keep trying to close. My God, don't get me started. Oh, my God. She was persistent, my God. Nehemiah was persistent. You got to be persistent. I'm not talking about begging because many of us, my God, keep asking God for the same thing, but we ain't done what God told us to do. And so, therefore, the heavens is closed over your life. Uh, your prayers is hitting the ceiling, my God. Well, I'm talking about getting a prayer through when God, my God, has not answered, but you know you're in right standing. You know your heart is clean. Your attitude is right. You're loving. You're giving. You're lining up your life. You ain't in habitual sin. And my God, God ain't answering, but that don't mean he ain't going to answer this. Keep on praying. Keep on persisting, my God. Oh, my God. But for those, my God, is outside of the will of God, pray that God we bring you to repentance and bring you back to God, and then ask God, my God, to answer your prayer. What did I just say? God's not going to answer prayers when you're outside of covenant. God's not going to answer prayers, my God, when we are, we are dominated by sin, doing what we want to do, when we want to do it. If I had to, I keep hitting on it. The attitude is nasty. My God, bitterness is in our heart. It closes the heaven. Here was a persistent widow. Her dying piece was gone, T. She said, I need God to move. I don't care about this judge not loving God, not yeah. loving my God, and I don't care about him not loving people. Yeah. Yeah. But he got something I need, and I'm going to make him give it up. Yeah. Yeah. Give me what belongs to me. Yeah. Give me what I need. Give me what belongs to me. Yeah. And she didn't have a nine millimeter. She didn't have an axe like I got. She didn't have a shovel. She had prayer. She had prayer, and she was persistent. She had the spirit of perseverance, Keisha, and she kept praying. In the midst of opposition, have you quit, my God? In the midst of trial, when one door closed, God opened up another, my God. This woman stayed persistent. She prayed, uh, her, her, her request, her persistence, my God, turned the judge's heart. Turned it. I need mine. Nehemiah's giving you principles, praise, persevere. Some of you need to get back in the race. You need to get back on your face and seek God again. Get back to praying. Prayer still works. I just read it to you. Oh, my God. God operates according to Ecclesiastes 3.1 on his time. There's a time for everything, my God. Just because he didn't answer right then don't mean he don't care. Don't mean it's not going to happen. You got to stay persistent. God, how bad do you really want it? Come on, somebody. How bad do you really want it? Because if you really want it, if you really want to see him delivered, if you really want to see your children come back, if you really want to see God do something for you, my God, your burden alone will keep you praying. Oh, your hunger and desire will keep you pushing. If you really want it. Because sometimes we don't really want what we really want. And so that's why as soon as opposition comes, we quit. Because we really didn't want it. We wanted it for a season, and some of us might have wanted something like us uh, uh, just to please the flesh, but come on, do you really want it? Because if it's a true burden from God. See, 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 one of the things about the widow and even Nehemiah, the burden, my God, that they was dealing with the widow as well, the woman of God as well as Nehemiah, it came from God. Yes. Yes. See, a lot of us quit because we fight battles that God didn't put in us to fight. Right. Our focus is, is on the wrong battles. We fight in fleshly battles that we cause. I'm going to say that, that we cause, and it's taking all of our strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God put these battles and these calls in them. They was fighting for God. They was praying for God's purpose. Yeah, yeah. They was praying for God's will to be done. Yeah. See what I say? And from that, God gave them strength yeah. to receive what they needed. Yeah? Are you praying for the wrong thing? Are you praying that your will be done instead of God's will being done? See, if you're praying just for your will to be done, you're going to get tired and tap out. Yeah, yeah. But if God put a burden on your heart, even when I tried to close the church door, he wouldn't let me do it. Even when I wanted to quit, Minister Janice, I couldn't do it. See, I Because it, it ain't my burden, it's his burden. Uh, I feel like Moses, what did I do to deserve this? My God, Moses wanted to kill himself. My uh, Come on, man, Janice had many talks, my God, about shutting all of it down. I can't get nobody. But God. Oh, somebody, but God. Oh, my God, I got a burden from God. He didn't give it to me. My God, I mean, I didn't get it. My God, God gave it to me. My God. Oh, my God gave you something. That's why you can't quit. My God, that's why you got to push. You got to rise, baby. Even when you want to quit, Christian, you got to rise. You got to find some strength on the inside. Oh, my God. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself and encourage yourself like David, Tina, and you got to rise and you rise from the inside, baby. Many of us looking for strength external, but some strength you're going to need in this journey got to come from within. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God, are you, do you got a burden enough to keep you praying? It's something heavy enough, my God, my God, to keep you praying. Oh my God, do you love him that enough to keep praying? Do you love your children enough to keep praying? Oh my God, you can't ask God to bring them back, my God, and reconnect you with your daughters if you got bitterness and unforgiveness yeah. towards you. Clean up my heart and create in me a clean. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. <laughs> oh, 
Point number three. Jump to point number three. I want to finish. Nehemiah was able to get his prayers answered because his internal was on point. His internal was right, y'all. Y'all look at me. Everybody in the church look at me because this is so true. When we are full of so much stuff, that's why I thank God for Joyce Bow. She talked about the cloudy mind, the confused mind. When we got so much stuff going on in our mind, When our mind are all over the place, when our thoughts are all over the place, when we're full of hatred, we're full of blame, we're full of anger, we're full of whatever. My God. We're not seeing nothing change. we persistent and we persevering like I just talked to you, but it's, we're coming and we're asking, but it's, when you come to the altar, our Lord, capital L-O-D said, and you're praying, and you realize you got art, yeah, yeah, yeah. leave thy gift, go be reconciled back to your brother and your sister. Why is it that in the church, everywhere, I'm not just talking about our church, but it's in our church too, that I can sit over here, I'm just going to sit right here, Janine, but I got a problem with somebody over there. And I know I need to go holler at him or her, but I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do all this. I'm being serious. Don't you know that God don't have to receive anything from you and I? You can't bring God defective animals, defective worship, sinful worship. If we got a lot of stuff that we didn't been through and we got stuff going on, we need to come down here and lay out and say, God, clean my heart up so I can offer sacrifices that's pleasing in thy sight. God, help me be weak and sour. Give me the strength. Give me the courage, my God, to go be weak and sour. If it's to my mama, to my grandma, whoever, help me let go. Don't let me continue to walk past my brother and sister and know that I got art in my heart and I'm down here jumping and shouting and screaming. That, What is that? The heavens are closed yeah, yeah, and you're yeah. frustrated. Yeah. All right. Nehemiah didn't have that problem. His heart was right. You got to keep your heart right. Your heart is your mind. Yeah. How many of y'all want your prayers answered? I got a little more time. Let me give y'all this right here. How many of y'all has been persistent in praying for something? Put your hands down. How many of y'all said, okay, God, I've been praying for this for a long time, and it ain't happened. Let me see your hand. One of the promises, and I told y'all every promise that God has spoken into my life and also through the scripture has been fulfilled. There's still one more promise at this time, but there's many more going to come, I know, down the road. But there's one promise that I'm still waiting See, this one has already came in. This is my daughter, my only daughter. Now, Ela Marie Peoples, my twin. But the word of God promised me in the book of Acts that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, that means right here, I shall be saved and my whole household. So, little Juju got to get here too. That's a promise. That's a promise that I'm standing on, my God, till I see my son standing right there. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Yeah. And so I constantly pray. I constantly pray. I constantly pray. And I constantly pray. And I constantly pray. And I constantly pray, my God, because one day, I'm not talking about just standing there. I'm talking about going hard for Christ standing right there. Oh, my God. And so I'm bound because I want to see that promise. Because I want to see that promise fulfilled destiny in my life. I got to stand. 
I got to go through hell, Tedrick. I got to let them lie on me, talk about me, misunderstand me. People lead it. I got to go through all that because I'm waiting to see my son. I'm waiting to see my promise. I can't faint. I can't quit. I can't give up, my God. I still need God to move. I still expect God to do some stuff in my life. I'm still waiting on some of y'all to get free. I still got to stand for some of y'all to get delivered. I got to stand. I can't quit, my God. You got to stand till the promises is fulfilled. Oh, we're going to get discouraged. I get it all the time. Oh, my God, but I made up in my mind that I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life going to be like. I don't care who don't go. I promise you. Oh, I redeemed myself and my son and my daughter, even with my wife. But I'm standing, my God. I said I'm standing till I see the promise, my God. Some of you have quit on your children because they keep acting up. The more you pray, the more crazy they act. Oh, my God, but you got to stand and tell God I'm waiting on my promise to be fulfilled when it comes to my children. Mm. Yes, Lord. Mm. Let me give you this. Let me give you this. I got a few minutes. We're making good time. I ain't been preaching that long. Oh, my God. You got to understand, like I told y'all, point number one, you're going to encounter problems. Point number two, when you got problems, go to prayer. Many of us got problems. Even the one preacher, we got problems, but you got to pray. And you got to make sure that your heart is right so the heavens can be open. Uh, you're praying persistent and you're, and you're persevering but the heavens are closed because your heart ain't right you won't do what God told you to do you read stuff in the Bible like oh that apply to somebody else no it apply to you that's somebody else's problem no it's your problem my neighbor she need to do that Tanya need to do that Satan and now you need to do it I need to do it heavens open symbolically when the red seas parted the heavens open they walk down on, walk through on dry ground. You want to be so effective in God that when you pray, the Red Sea parts. When you walk up to the, every obstacle, they got to do two things. You got to bow down or move. When you're in God, you got power, baby. People of vision embrace providence. That's right. You ain't got to wait. They embrace providence. They embrace providence. People of vision. Let me teach you what this means. The final statement of Nehemiah, my God, in verse 11, it says, seems to indicate that, we, that, that, that he felt the weight of the assignment. Do anybody feel the weight? Ah, uh, Margaret and Jenny, do you feel the weight? Kristen, do you feel the weight? His name is Kristen too, Kristen. Do you feel the weight? Uh, do you feel the weight? Are you getting ready to say I do? <laughs> I promise you, baby, it's a weight. I promise. Yeah. Uh, do you feel the weight? <laughs> Uh, Sister Ruba, I see you. Do you feel the weight, though? My God. Did anybody? See, Nehemiah felt the weight. Uh, but it's not by my mind, he said. Mm. Watch this, my God. Uh, the weight, my God, of the Simon. He knew. But here's the thing that, that forged him on through. He knew who he was. Write that down. Yeah. Yeah. Nehemiah knew who he was and where he was. He knew who he was and where he was. He knew who he was. That's why, uh, Brandon, we got to know who we are. So we won't return back to who we thought we was. Uh, people that did the time like we done it, baby. See, if they, they, they go back because they don't know who they are. Uh, they'll come to church, my God, and they preach and jump in and shout, but they're not teaching them who they are. They're going off of Christ. We teach you to find out who you are, who you is. Purpose. <laughs> yeah, my purpose to keep you from going back to Egypt. <laughs> purpose to keep you from going back to them life. Come on, somebody. I know all y'all didn't come out of prison, but you know what you go back to. My God, if you know who you are, you won't go back to whatever your thing is because everybody got a thing, baby. I promise you, it might not be prison and game, banging, but you got a thing. I'm talking about every last one of us got something, my God, that we like to do that God don't like. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Oh, yeah, yeah, don't be talking about all that. That's the problem. You think you're better than everybody. Everybody got a thing. Somebody say, what's your thing? Look at your neighbor and say, what's your thing? Uh, look at a homie and say, what's your thing? <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's all good. We're getting right killed. Just keep pushing. Uh, my, who he is and what you and who He knew who he is and where he is. Watch this. Now, put this. Watch this. Where he is. Position is everything. I'm about to. Position is everything. He was the cupbearer to the very one that had the key to give him what he needed. To do what God called him to do. Oh, I'm still with vision. He was positioned strategically in the kingdom 
assigning his servant the king who had all the authority to give him what he needed to execute God's will. God strategically put him in a place. And then while he was there, he was found faithful because God knew because he's a generational thinker. He knew that he was going to need favor from the king. And so Nehemiah was faithful with his time, talent, and treasure because now God has positioned him to be able to go to God and say, God, touch the king's heart because Nehemiah knew in his prayer that I'm going to need this king to give me permission and letters and so forth to do what I'm called to do. That's the providence. Watch this. Position is no accident. Write that down. Position is no accident. Uh, I'm reminded of Pastor Madeline. I'm going to use this. She probably, uh, Pastor Madeline showed up about four or five years ago. How long she been there? She said, uh, uh, God, why am I at that church? I mean, this man ain't got nothing in common. We come from two different worlds. By the way, everybody that don't come from out of what I come out of, that's sitting up in this church. But I can promise you, and y'all haven't heard of, there's many gifts and talents and substance that's down in this former, keyword former, that God had for you. And she used to ask herself, God, why? Why am I here? Me and them, we don't, but over a period of time, she just kept showing up. She just kept showing up. And while she kept showing up, inner, key word, y'all, y'all stay with me, man. Inner healing. The very thing that she needed began to take place. Because we're not a traditional church. I'm not a traditional pastor. Thank See what I'm trying to say? And so therefore I'm willing to poke, I'm willing to provoke, I'm willing to pull, I'm willing to love, I'm willing to coerce, I'm willing to stroke at the right time. Uh, many of you still haven't figured out why you're here. Uh, but you need to understand that God brought many of you here uh, because, my God, I, through Christ, have something that you need. Yeah. And if you ain't getting it, it ain't my fault, it's your fault, I promise you. Because I'm giving you everything. If you ain't getting it, it's your fault. It ain't mine. Because I'm giving you everything. I'm so transparent. I'm too transparent. I'm too transparent sometimes. Sister Anthony told me, you just pass you, you, you tell too much. And some things keep. Keep it quiet. Keep it at the crib. Yeah. I don't know how to be fake. Ain't, I wasn't fake when I was banging. I won't be fake for Christ. Uh, well, why am I saying that? Why am I saying Because you need to understand. God positioned you and bought you for a reason. And the reason why you ain't getting what you need because you ain't all the way in. And then if he was all the way in, you let flesh cause you to f- do Peter. To do Peter and back up and start falling from a distance. Now, what used to be good to you and feel good to you, you used to jo- enjoy and love, now you don't really care for. You grieving me, but you hurting yourself. Watch my verbiage. You grieve me because I love you because I love the people, but you hurting yourself. You're hurting yourself. I said you're hurting your. I may be grieved because I'm watching you self-sabotage. Thank you, daughter. But I know that if you come closer, you get your heart right like they doing, then God going to open up the heavens and you're going to see some things happen in your life. Yeah. Can I say this as I move and I'm going to close this? Attitude is disqualifying a lot of people in the body of Christ. Your attitude. Attitude. Proper attitude leads to proper altitude. <laughs> Regardless of your position in life, whether at church or at work or at home, we need to know that there is no accidents. God has placed you where he has for a purpose, y'all. There are no accidents or coincidences with God. That's the providence of God, y'all. You are where you are for his glory. Yeah. My God. Esther, Esther, right now, Esther, 4 and 14. Who you go, Tanya? This is you. 4 14. If you keep quiet at a time like this, the deliverance and relief for the Jews will arise from someone. Uh, see, see, f- don't, see, don't think that you're the only one that God can use. Don't get so full of yourself, Juju and body of Christ, that you act like God ain't got nobody else available to do what he created you to do. There's a whole lot of people that can do what I do and do it all the way better than what I do. But see, 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 her, 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 Mordecai understood you. Her, don't, 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 don't think that God can't use nobody else now. See, that's some of your problem, attitude. You think that you're the only one that can do it. So you feel like, my guy, if I, if I, if I get mad at Mama Donna, you know what I'm saying, I say, I ain't got to greet no more. Well, guess what? We'll raise up this baby right here. Come here, baby. Come on. We'll raise up this young one right here to train you to be replaced. I can't get nobody say nothing right there. God always got somebody else, my God. All you got to do, oh, amen, Janice. God always got somebody else. See, that's the problem. See, see, that's the mindset of people in church. They feel like if they stop doing it, they hurt the church. Yeah. Now you hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because especially, go ahead, baby, especially if God bought you to do, and placed you, my God, her, to do something, you're not doing it, you're in disobedience. 
you closing up the heavens on your life. But you call yourself trying to be bad and hurt me or hurt Janice or hurt Mama Donna or hurt your wife, and I'm just going to sit down, Minister Mel. See, I, I see I'm, t- I'm fathering the church, baby, and you're hurting yourself. Yeah. Many of you step down and quit, my God, because you think you hurt me, but you're not hurting me. I'm going on to see what the end of a saved life is going to be like, baby. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy, this is real father right here. And this is still vision. This is still vision. Because my vision is forging me through, Maya. When people that I thought was with me turned on me and still turning on me. Vision will keep us, Janice. Oh, yeah, I'm going to bring it in. I want to father you, though. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. That's the, uh, don't, don't keep quiet. Uh, God will send deliverance from somewhere else. But, who, but, it, says, but, but it says, who knows, though? Uh, look at your name and say, who knows? who knows? If perhaps you were made queen for a time such as this. Uh, who knows, Pastor Ted, that you was brought here? I promise you, y'all used to send me on Sundays. At the new campus, yeah. whew, whew, I'll be in American Airlines, I promise you, because there's a call there it is. Yeah. that, and they'll tell you that there's, there's opportunities that I haven't took. Come on. Yeah. Right. Not because I don't trust you, right. it just ain't time yet. Right. Don't look for me to be here every Sunday because there's a greater calling. Right. There's something down on this side of me that the world needs, and I know it. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? Because it ain't being preached to, and God is getting me ready for a greater calling. You can't keep me on... I promise you I'm taking flight. You better stay with me, man of God. I'm going somewhere. I promise you I'm going somewhere. You know, don't, don't get used to seeing me every Sunday. There's another level. 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 I promise you. Oh, my God. Don't get it twisted, baby. Oh, my God. I've been laboring. I've been laboring. I've been laboring. But you ready? You ready? Y'all showed me yesterday. You ready? I can go on. There's many people that can handle the church. I done trained up people, my God. I know people can handle the church. But don't get used to seeing me every Sunday. I'm going on somewhere. I'm going on. I think it's time for me now to start accepting those invitations out of state that I've been saying no to. So position is not an accident. Some of you, Trey, oh my God, let me finish. Come here, sister. Let me show this. I'm going to validate this and I'm going to cut the sermon short. God brought you here first. Let me show y'all what I mean about bringing the word to the people and bring the people to the word. There it is. That's principles. Pastors, take the word to the people and bring the people to the word. This one showed up first. I don't know how she got her and don't care, but she here. <laughs> she got delivered. Yeah. Well, when she come, he wants to be in her life. Yeah. They got a little family got cracking. Yeah. But there's a mandate. There's a mandate that she came and got that if he going to be her, yeah. that he going to have to add her to See what I'm trying to say? She wasn't willing to compromise. See what I'm trying to say? So God brought her her position, got her free. Don't abort your purpose. Some of you are shipwrecking and getting ready to do stuff that God ain't told you. He told you to do it, but it ain't time for you to do it. You ain't healthy as you think you are. Don't cover up, my God, and be deceived because you think because you're speaking tongues, you can quote some scripture, you got four people following you, you think you're ready to go past the church. This one had to come and get in position. Guess what? Because his deliverance and her deliverance. I'll share a little bit about it. Used to be a stone cold alcoholic. Used to be a stone cold alcoholic. A female alcoholic, yep, they some of the worstest. But when she got free, been smoking weed since he was 13. Look at they just so humble and just, just. Oh my God. She got in position, he got in position, and now they both set free from hangups and habits that they walked in the church with. Wasn't no accident. Ain't no accident, man. Ain't no accident. Ain't no accident, daughter. It wasn't no accident, Tequila, when I showed up at that hospital, you wouldn't even remember at the church and met your mama and everybody and look at you today. Much better, much better, much better. Ain't 
ain't no accident, Brandon, that they brought you to a man's encounter all the way from Oklahoma City. And Pastor Manny said, this is who you need to be connected to. Somebody that you can identify with. Look at you today. It's not, it's not no accident, William, that you, know, you went to the John Starks basketball camp. You made me understand my, when you went to my brother's camp and now you're at ORU and, and you're coming uh, to going over Christ by way of the first service, but now you're getting ready to join going over Christ. It's no accident. Yeah. Even when you was a kid, yeah. I was going hard for Christ, but you was a kid and God was planting seeds yeah. then. Yeah. And I didn't even know you. That's no accident. There's no accident, Yolanda. Me and you used to get out back in the day on them streets and now I'm pastoring you yeah. and now you're yeah. set free and delivered. Oh, my God. Position matters. I'm getting ready to close. I didn't want over two Sundays in a row, but let me clarify this. Some of you think that you just stumbled up, and that's okay. Some of you still think right now that being connected to this work really don't matter. But I promise you, when y'all hear me make the statement, who in my life got to suffer while I remain the same, if she would have chose not to make a decision to sit up under untraditional pastor in church, she would probably still be going to a church like she was and drinking alcohol till she almost killed herself like she did. He would still be doing the things that he was doing. So when God brought her out, God brought him out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who in your life is suffering because you're doing church? Uh, who in your life is suffering because you're full of bitterness and anger and the heavens is closed? Who are you believing God for to come to the house of the Lord to get saved, to get free, but they're not coming? Ask yourself, why is they not coming? I'm praying every day. I'm trying to live right. Why? God says, search yourself. Because some of it ain't you. Let me balance it. It just ain't time. It just ain't time. Sometimes your prayers not being answered ain't because you and I, I and you. I said you and I, I and you. I'm not identifying myself with you. I'm not better than you. It don't mean that you in sin. It just ain't time. That's why I take faith and patience, Shade, to do the will of the Father. Many people make mistakes because they get impatient, Christian. They want something now. I thank God. Let me close it. Let me close it. I thank God. I was telling Pastor Champ them. Nobody gave going home for Christ nothing. What nothing? Everything. That's why he gets so much glory because it wasn't given to me. He birthed it, and he wanted it to happen just the way it happened. God didn't give me nothing. I mean, the people didn't give me nothing. Even my spiritual father, he gave me importation. Now I had to go birth it. That's called vision. He imported into me vision. He imported into me Christian purpose. He imported into me resources, my God. And now it's up to us to execute. You want everything from God, but you ain't willing to pay the price to do nothing. You got to pay a price to be free, baby. Yeah, yeah. Position matters. <clears throat> Don't be just a church attender in this church. Right. Somebody is waiting. Somebody is waiting and needing you to get all the way in God. And when you do, prosperity will begin to happen. Prosperity is not just money. That too will come. I can't get nobody. As I close this last thing, this, we may stand it because I'm not going to preach it. When you get in position, prosperity. I'm talking about mind, will, and emotions. Mind, will, and emotions. A lot of us need a whole lot of internal healing. We need healing, man. We need a whole lot of healing so the heavens can be open. Prosperity will begin to manifest when you understand positionally in the kingdom. Positionally in the kingdom that you must be taqwa. You must be God focused. You must stand in the square. You must let things go. When you and I begin to do it God's way, prosperity will begin to take place. The resources you have been given are not by luck, y'all. They have been given to you by the providence of God. 
to be used for his glory. Don't miss that. The vision, the business, being a mother, being a father, being a co-worker, or whatever it may be. Christian, everything that God has given you, brother Christian, is for his glory. You take and submit both of your business. You tell God today, I'm bringing both of my business back and submit them to you for your glory. You think you living in prosperity like you are now? You bring it and submit everything to God and watch what God do in your life. Everything. This church is for his glory. You are for his glory. Little Fuzzy, your company is for his glory, Keisha, and I know you don't understand that. Your labor, your gifts, your expertise as a salesman, man of God, is for God's glory. We can say we know that, but do we? The transitional home, brother Boyd, I know you do, is for his glory. Sweeping and mopping like you did, Joe and Michelle, is for his glory. Jesus. Cleaning up and vacuuming, Jenna, and all that, the things y'all did, all those that, that, that served. Oh my God, God's house. What you do for God's house, God gonna do for your house. Every one of y'all, thank you, Holy Ghost. Every one of y'all that showed up and, and my God that made a sacrifice and didn't blow off the command from the Father to come up there and serve, my God, I pronounce a supernatural blessing upon your life. And when you get it, you make sure you let me know so you can testify about it. I decree it because I had authority to decree it. I said I decree it because I had the authority to decree it. You watch what I tell you. Heavens need to be open. Prosperity will come. Power will manifest. Prosperity will come. Soul, mind, will, and emotion. God said, I wish above all else that you prosper, even as your soul. Is it possible that you got financial blessings, but your mind is messed up? Are you here this afternoon full of purpose and potential, but you're frustrated? You should be at the altar. Is it possible this afternoon that, 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 that you have tasted the goodness of the Lord, but you have lost your desire to please God at the level you once did? You should be at the altar as well. If it's something you need to submit back to God, if you have been using your gifts and talents for you and not to advance God's kingdom, you ought to be at the altar asking God to forgive you and give them back to God because everything that you and I have is for his glory. If you don't know Christ as your personal Lord and Savior and you know that if you died, you don't know if you're ready to go before God and your job well done, I want to encourage you to come stand by her. If you have never accepted Christ and you want to accept Christ or if you want to be recommitted back to Christ, come stand by her. Just meet me by her. Come on, time is at hand. If you want to recommit, oh my God, thank you. Oh my God, thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. If one of you children, y'all listen to me because y'all know our father, y'all. Y'all look good over there, minister school. And, and, uh, if you're dealing with something, some pain, some frustration, kids, there's something that you need God to help you with. We don't have to know, but God knows. I want you to come over here. Come stand by her. Any one of you kids. Come on, Tevin. I see you coming. They coming. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. I see y'all. Come stand by her. Come stand right over here. Bring my babies over here, y'all. Anybody else? Don't feel embarrassed. Any pain? Father issues. Mad at your father. Mad at your mama. Mad at the school teacher. Mad at the bully. If that's you, come. Let's get healed today. Shout out that she can about. Any one of you grown folks that got father issues, come to the front. Struggling, angry, bitter. Come. Let's take her kingdom business. That's right. Love on the tray. That's right. A lot of hurt in the body of Christ. Everywhere. Fresh start. There's somebody that you got in unforgiveness, church, which says, you, know, you, you might want to just come on, let's let it go. Let's just come on, let it go. 2019 is our saying, let it go. Let it go. What you got to let go? Come, bring it. Come, bring it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I'm almost finished. 
If you need God to speak to you about something and you've been praying about it, you might want to step in the river. If you've been asking God for something to show you, oh my God, if you're willing, thank you, Holy Ghost, if you're willing, listen to me, if you're willing for God to show you your sin ballots and Tobias, come to the front. If you want God to show you your sin ballots and Tobias, come to the front. Thank you for the body. Oh my God, thank you for the body. Thank you for the body. Oh my God, thank you for the body. Real church, thank you for the body. Thank you for the body. Get ready to pray, Brother Christian. I'm going to have you pray again, son. My God, my God. Come on, come on. Last call. Last call. We're getting ready to release the man of God to pray. Whoa. Attitude adjustment. Attitude adjustment. Yeah. For your glory. We all standing for God's glory. Everyone that has come to the altar. Don't just wait on me to pray. I want you to talk to God first, and then we're going to pray. Just to see talk to God. If you need direction, talk to God. To be Tell God to heal and answer whatever King. prayer you need him to do. For Make sure that you ask God to clean your heart up so the heavens will open up. You need a red seat experience this afternoon. You Thank you, Lord. Today is the day. Talk to him. Come on, y'all. Talk to him. To be whole. Today is a fresh start. My king for your glory. I gotta be where he is, but you can't let sin go because it won't go. God is a holy God. God is a holy God. Sin cannot go. Oh my God, I gotta be where you at, God. Come on, God, let's push. Come on, let's push. We getting ready to shift, baby. Let's push. Oh my God. To be mercy, God. Mercy, God. Oh my God, mercy. I will do Thank you, Lord. Just to see. To be whole, thank you, Lord. My King, for your glory. Oh, thank you, Lord. I will do anything just to see. Oh, Lord. Save. Save. To be whole, you are. My King, oh, ah. for your glory. Feed the sheep and they will come. Yeah. Oh, my God. Feed the sheep and I they will, will come. If you feed them, they'll come eat, Mama Thomas. If you feed them, they will come eat. Just if you preach the truth, Pastor Dean, they will come eat. If you preach the truth, Pastor oh, Chapman, they will come eat. If you preach the truth, Pastor Francetta, they will come eat. If you preach the truth, they will come eat. People are hungry for the truth. For you, I just want you to spend a few minutes. I don't want you to depend on a man. I want you to talk to God. That's why I got you standing here. There you go. Let God wash you. Let God wash you. Let God wash you. Let God wash you. Trevon back in. I'm calling her back in. Don't stop praying. Don't stop praying. Oh my God, pray for them daughters, Sandra. Oh my God, thank you, Lord. Oh my God. Look, Tiffany, lay your hands on Cleo for me. Lay your hands on Cleo, Tiffany. Look, Tiffany, right there. Pray for her, pray for her, pray for her. Pray for her. That's right, look, Tiffany, pray for her. She needs Touch the people, God. Touch the people, God. Touch the people, God. Come on, y'all. Stretch towards heaven. Come on. Oh, my God. Stretch, stretch, stretch. It's me, God. I know we went over, but we need this church. We get ready to undertake the major work. Oh, my God. 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 O
we lift it up to you right now every heartache every trial every tribulation every aching every addiction every curse of the enemy we lift it up to you Father for you said that your yoke is easy and your burden was light so right now, we lift ourselves up to you. And we break ourselves from everything that's not like you. Every curse of the enemy, every lie from hell, every word declared over us, and the things that we picked up ourselves, Father, we break ourselves from those things right now. For you are the chain breaker. You are the chain breaker. And so every yoke is destroyed right now. Every yoke is destroyed. Not broken, but destroyed by the authority that rests in Jesus' name. For at the name of Jesus, every principality has to bow. Every demon has to bow. Every assignment from hell has to bow. It bows right now at the name of Jesus. Chains, yokes, and bondages be broken right now. And We shall be free. We shall be a free people. We shall be a free people. We shall be a free people. We receive the freedom of the Lord. We step into it with courage. We break soul ties. We break relationships that don't glorify you. We break relationships that don't glorify you. We break commitments that don't glorify you. We break covenant with hell right now. We break covenant with the things of this earth realm. We break it right now. And we sell ourselves over to you. We give ourselves back to you, Father. For the glory of our King, there is nothing that we will not do. The unspoken things that is cursed right now in the name of Jesus. The heartache that we can't understand, it's cursed right now at the name of Jesus. And there is a healing balm being released. A healing balm that flows from the mountain of Zion. And it is healing his church. Lift your hands and receive it now. Lift your hands and receive the healing of the Lord. Papan de frema is on do remai. Shende frekama bamban de remai ya manta tare. Receive the healing. Ambon do remai sanda. Emotional healing. Healing from trauma. Healing from abuse. Both physical and emotional. We receive the healing. We receive the healing from vacancy. Father, we receive healing from not having what we needed. We receive the healing for even now you're supplying it. We, we receive your healing. 
We no longer operate from vacancy. We receive it. We receive your wholeness. Send a bomb of Gondo Rebasinda. And the oil of the Lord is healing and massaging every wound. In the natural, we receive what you're doing spiritually. We receive it. We receive it right now in our hearts, Father. Whoa, we receive it, Lord. We receive it right now. The stony heart is being softened. The stony heart is being softened. The hardened places, we are being softened. And we are being prepared to receive the fullness of Christ. The fullness of Christ, which is love and peace and joy. We receive the fruits of the Spirit in our lives right now. Open it up, open it up, Father. Open it up, open it up, Father. Anything that's not like you, search us, O oh Lord, and remove it. Search us, O oh Lord. Be mine. Anything that's not like us, Father, that's not like you, remove it, Father. We want to go deeper. We want to go farther. We want to embrace you, Father. Anything that's hindering us from the inner court, Father, remove it so that we can enter into the holies of holies and receive eh, and receive you and receive you at our jobs receive you in our homes receive you with our siblings receive you with our mothers and our fathers we want to receive you in every relationship we want to receive you lord Yanda da da ba sandaya. Oh, 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 oh. Give us a fervency in seeking you, that we might not be moved. That we can say to the giant, either you bow or you move. We receive what you have for us, Father. We receive it. We take the territory. We take the land. We take the providence. We stay in our position of prayer. And we will honor you in our private time. Whew. Nah. We will honor you in our private time. Everywhere we go, we take you with us. Everywhere we go. There is no area of us that you don't have access to. We present our bodies, our living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. It is our reasonable response. So receive us, Father, as we receive you. As we receive your Son into every place of our lives. And it is so. And it is so. And because of what we do, and because of who you are, we walk in blessing. We walk in favor. We walk in grace. And we walk in mercy. And it is so. In your son's most holy and precious name we pray. Amen.